this week on Transworld Sport, we head to New Delhi to get to grips with India's first wrestling world champion, Sushil Kumar. On the waters of Orlando, we reflect on the career of Emily Cope, the first lady of wakeboarding. We find out how Rugby Union is leading the way in the fight against HIV AIDS in Swaziland. And we meet up with Zbigniew Pietrakowski, one of Poland's greatest ever boxers and the only man to have fought both Muhammad Ali and Laszlo Papp. winter's afternoon. A small town in the Southland. It's a Sunday and the snow has just begun to fall again. Traffic still flows, but soon the streets around the town will be near impassable. For the people of Bielsko Biala, it's time to head home, turn the heating up and shut the door tight on the outside world. But for one elderly inhabitant of this quiet place, it's time to welcome transport into their home. After a long time on the trail of this 76-year-old, the moment is finally right for retired boxer Zbigniew Pietrakowski to sit down and tell us about his eventful life. Well, let me see. I'm not quite sure where to begin. When I look back on my career in the ring, I have to say that I'm satisfied with what I achieved. I consider myself to have been an honest fighter, who respected the people I fought. I had well over 300 fights, and I won most of them. I lost on only a few occasions. I fought all over Poland, and boxing also took me all over the world. I was in the ring with lots of different characters. Born in 1934, Pietrakowski grew up in a Poland devoured by the Second World War. During the time of German occupation, his father was arrested by the Nazis and spent five years in prison. After the war, the Pietrakowski family were reunited and, like so many others, began the slow process of rebuilding their lives. One of three brothers, Zbigniew took up boxing in 1950, at the age of 16. Starting out as a light middleweight, he was soon the most exciting fighter on the Polish boxing scene, winning his first national championship in 1954. A year later, Paul Southpaw won the first of his four European amateur championship gold medals. In 1956, at a tournament in Warsaw, Pietrakowski defeated the famed Hungarian fighter Laszlo Papp. By this stage of his career, Papp had already won two Olympic gold medals and was considered one of the best boxers in the world. In the second round, Pietrakowski became the first and only man to put Papp on the canvas. <laughs> Papp was a particularly good competitor. He was older than me, so of course I had heard all about him. He was already a legend in the sport, and his abilities and achievements in the boxing ring were well known. The occasion on which I managed to beat him was such a great moment for me. It was a huge success. Just months later, Pietrakowski faced Papp again at the 1956 Olympics in Melbourne. It was the Poles' first games, whilst Papp was going for an unpid third successive Olympic gold. The pair met in the semis, and the bout was a classic. Papp was awarded a narrow victory, and the Hungarian went on to beat Jose Torres in the final. Pietrakowski had to settle for bronze. You knew that you were going to be in a really tough fight with Papp. Over the course of time, I fought him on three separate occasions. They were good fights. Sometimes I was on top, and other times he was on top. He beat me twice, and I managed to beat him. He was one of the strongest opponents that I ever got in the ring with. 
After Melbourne, Piet Rakowski moved up in weight. He won gold in the middleweight division at the 1957 European Championships and in 1959 he became the light heavyweight champion. Age 25, he travelled to the 1960 Rome Olympics as a strong favourite for light heavyweight gold. But standing in his way of glory was an 18-year-old American from Louisville, Kentucky. I am the greatest! Muhammad Ali, or Cassius Clay as he was then known, had taken up boxing as a 12-year-old in 1954. A few years later, around the time that Pietrakowski was winning European titles, Clay made contact with Angelo Dundee, the man who would later become his trainer. I got a call one day and it went, my name is Cassius Marcellus Clay. I won the Golden Gloves in Kentucky. I won the uh, gloves in Chicago. I won the gloves in uh, Seattle, Washington. I'm going to be the next Olympic champion. And this was 1958. So this kid was predicting two years prior. Both Clay and Pietrakowski breezed through the early rounds. Zbigniew had been keeping a close eye on this young American and was very impressed with what he saw in Clay's first few bouts. Cassius Clay was the name on everybody's lips. It was obvious to see that he was a really good boxer. I knew he was something special. He had attributes that a great fighter needs. He was taller than me, and he had a loose, unconventional boxing style, with his hands kept very low. I knew that I would be in for a very tough fight if we were to meet. I went into our fight fully aware of his abilities. There was no way I underestimated him. The two men did indeed meet in the final. In the first round, Pietrakowski took the fight to his youthful opponent. After the opening three minutes, Clay quickly settled and soon found his range. Clay's stinging punches opened up a cut on Pietrakowski's mouth. The devastating speed of the American teenager drained his stamina, but to his credit, the pole ended the fight on his feet. He was just too good for me in the end. I have no complaints. The best man won. There's no disgrace in losing to such a boxer. And he went on to prove over and again just how good he was. He was a phenomenon. Having been denied gold by two of the most brilliant boxers in history, Pietrakowski tried again at the 1964 Olympics. Even though he was past his best, he did still manage to win bronze. It was his last major honor. In 1968, aged 34, he retired from the ring. He'd had 367 fights, losing just 14 of them. If he'd been allowed to turn professional by the communist authorities, it's likely that he would have enjoyed an equally successful pro career. Even though I retired from the ring, I still wanted to remain actively involved with boxing. Shortly after I hung my gloves up, I became a trainer. I worked as a trainer in one of the local clubs, and I did this for some years. In fact, I went on to work for a number of different boxing clubs. I enjoyed staying in touch with the amateur boxing scene. Over the years, Zbigniew became friends with Laszlo Papp and Muhammad Ali. He watched with admiration as Ali became the greatest heavyweight on the planet. I stayed in touch with Ali. Obviously, once he'd moved to the ranks of the professionals, we couldn't meet in the ring anymore. But there were a number of occasions on which we did meet up with one another. In later life, Pietrakowski was a key figure in the Polish Olympic Committee. After the fall of communism, he became a member of Lech Walesa's political party and was elected to the Polish parliament. Today, the 76-year-old leads a far quieter life, happiest at home with his wife Halina. Pietrakowski looks back on his career in the ring with a huge amount of satisfaction. He holds a unique place in boxing history as the only man to have fought both Laszlo Papp and Muhammad Ali. Despite the fact that those two legends prevented him from reaching the of the amateur game, Zbigniew Pietrakowski can take pride in the fact that during the late 50s and early 60s, he was one of the finest boxers in the world. Amongst boxers, there's a well-known saying that two men come into the ring and only one can leave as the winner. 
That's the reality of the situation, and you have to accept it. I tried my best at all times. That's all you can do. So when I look back on my career, I can say with all honesty that I am satisfied, thing that I managed to achieve in the sport.